In order to support our show, we need the help of some great advertisers. And we want to make sure those advertisers are the ones you'll actually want to hear about. But we need to learn a little more about you to make that possible. So go to podsurvey.com slash Tamar and take a quick anonymous survey that will help us get to know you better. That way we can bring you advertisers you won't want to skip. Once you've completed the quick survey, you can enter for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that's podsurvey.com slash Tamar. And thank you for your help. Every sector of our lives is pretty much pretty much under construction. Family under construction. Career under construction. Relationships under construction. Emotions I know mine live under construction. Finances under construction. We might as well be under construction together. Hey, podcast listeners, it's your girl Tamar Braxton, and thanks a lot for tuning in to my very first episode of Under Construction. Yes, okay, I know that I've been in the news a lot over the past few weeks, and trust me, we're going to get into that in a second, but first things first, let me just set the tone for what you can expect each week here on Under Construction, okay? So look, Under Construction is a safe place for me and my guests, when I have them, to unpack and process the things that we all go through in life. You know, the kids under construction, your career, that be under construction, your relationships stay under construction, okay? And your emotions, I know mine lives on under construction lane, all right? And what you cooking for Thanksgiving, you know, everything in your life is basically under construction, you know? All right, now, let's go ahead on and address the big old pink elephant in the room. Okay, a few weeks ago, I went on the Tamron Hall show and it was the first time that I've shared my story, my truth in public. And while I do think it was necessary to share some things, there were a number of things that I felt, you know, that was kind of glossed over or just not mentioned at all. So I want to take a moment to address a few of those things. Because the truth is, it's my story and it's my story to share. So with all of that being said, I am going to start things off with the most important question of every single day. And that is, am I okay? Yes, I am okay. Today is a good day. I'll take today. Okay, so the first thing that I want to clear up, I mean, not really clear up, but I just want to be crystal clear about. Um, For me, it's like the most important thing, like the whole reason why I wanted to go and have a sit down because I wanted to talk about my process and how I'm healing and the fact that I am in therapy. Yes, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety, um, but that was due to a circumstance. I'm not on any medication, but I am in intensive therapy every single day. And that is just something that I decided would be best for my healing. And um, I don't know. I just feel like that's the thing that I needed to do. (laughs) You know, and I'm not going to lie. I wasn't comfortable, you know, with going to therapy because it's this misconception that something is definitely wrong with you. You know, like like you're a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And while I can't stand now that I'm in therapy, words like that, I meant to say that to you so you can understand that when somebody says mental illness in our society, people think that that automatically means that they're crazy. And it doesn't. It just means that I am going to therapy because I can't figure this out by myself. And I need another perspective and another angle because my way is just not working. Those of you who are contemplating on going to therapy and you're not comfortable going to therapy, I am here to tell you that it doesn't make you abnormal. It doesn't make you any less than your neighbor or your friends or your siblings or your loved one. It just makes you aware and it's okay. 
And it is a safe place to go and have a conversation and conversations about things that are in your head that you really want to rationalize. And really, that is what therapy is, talking things out. If you're contemplating, go. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, And I'm here to tell you, you're not crazy. Okay, so here is one thing that I think people don't realize is that I created Braxton Family Values. I created that show and funded it, okay? (laughs) Let me go there. So it's for me, I know everybody's like, well, your sisters have to work and your sisters got to do this, that, and the other. Yeah, I know this because I created it. (laughs) I'm not saying don't go to work. I'm just saying don't include me, you know? And, you know, normally if it's something that you create and something that you, you know, are a part of, you know, like... It, it kind of goes away when you go away. And not that I wanted that to happen. I just don't want to participate. And so that's really all I have to say about that because, you know, that's behind me now, <laughs> period. Now, everybody know I love to give my take on things. And so each week I am going to be giving my take on what's happening in these streets, child. Okay, so my week was crazy. Dealing with the pandemic, rising again and the anxiety of the election okay and it's just been a lot because I'm trying to deal with how to properly execute virtual learning for my son you know and he's in the second grade and he's seven years old and Like, come on, y'all, I am not alone in this. Like, I am having a hard time. I mean, it's not really so much Logan, my seven-year-old, it's more about the teachers and their expectations of my participation in their job. Okay. (laughs) And I'm trying, I know that everybody's trying to adjust. It's new for everybody. I understood. Okay, I overstand. All right. It's a lot. But tell me, do you have the same issues with your child's teacher being on you about turning in assignments late? (sighs) Linda, Miss Linda. Where I am in my life, I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm not here to, you know, cause no problems or nothing like that. I want to bring a solution to the problem. Okay, so um, let's do this. After he finishes an assignment, since y'all on Zoom anyway and you can see it for yourself, Linda, pick up the work, right? Put it in the, the Zoom and say, hey, class, everybody post their work, Let me see that you have done it and take a snapshot so you know that they did the work. And then at the end of the week, I can turn in everything. And then they try to get slick at first. Like, oh, you can't eat during class. I know the devil is a lie. (laughs) I know he will be eating breakfast in front of this Zoom this morning that the Lord has sent us. Mm-mm. And then they try to get slick and be like, oh, he got to wear his uniform. Oh, that's not the right sweater. Linda, not today. I ain't do laundry because I'm turning in your assignments, girl. I just been trying to figure out because I know the teacher's job is super hard, right? Because like, how do you pay attention? I, I don't know how many kids are like in like a regular ca- classroom, but Logan's is like maybe like eight to 10 or 12 or whatever. And... It's hard to keep up with that many kids and make sure they focus and make sure you call on, you know, different kids and stuff like that. But I I don't know how y'all feel. How do y'all feel about it? I want to know how y'all feel about it, you know, because I know I can't be alone in this. But I do have a hack for all the parents. I found a tutor who was qualified to help teach my kid for $20. (laughs) <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody's taking side gigs now. It's hard out here for a pimp, you know. Everybody got to figure out how to make it do what it do. And get your child a tutor for the things that you don't know. I mean, it's it might sound crazy to, like, to fail online school, but they actually can, you know. 
my child ain't got this many incompletes in his entire life. He's only seven. Like I'm setting him up, you know, for failure. And that wasn't cool to me. So don't be in my comments going in on me because I mean, this is my truth. Okay. I'm not saying nothing bad about a teacher or the teachers. I already acknowledge the fact it's hard for everybody. But what I am saying, okay, I'm coming from the parents' perspective. It's a lot on us. All right, I'm finna keep it a thou thou. Hey, man, it is all me. Okay, so each week we're gonna carve out some time to answer some of your questions. And this segment will be called Keeping It a Thou Thou. All right, that means we're gonna keep it all the way trill. So the first question is Dear Tamar, how do you bounce back after being knocked down? So I feel like there are a few steps that you have to um, do in order to be on the road of rebuilding, right? And I don't have them all, but I got four, the first four, because that's where I'm at. I ain't even at number five yet, okay? Step one is the acknowledgement. I acknowledge that there are things about myself that I need and want to change. You have to acknowledge the fact that you ain't got your shit together and you done fucked up enough relationships. You know, every situation is ending up the same. So there are things that you have to change about yourself. That is number one. Number two is the decision. I am going to make the decision to make the necessary changes to be the best me possible. I was okay with putting myself last, you know, because I didn't love myself enough or appreciate myself enough to want to be first. I almost thought it was a selfish thing. Like, how dare you choose yourself if somebody else is in need? But what I've come to realize is that the person in need is a reflection of the things that you need. So that's why I felt like I was so quick to help the other person or other people because I could clearly see their flaws and what they needed help with, but I couldn't see mine. So once I turned the mirror on myself, the desire came to start to help myself first. And I hope that makes sense. (laughs) I hope that makes sense. So as a decision, um, I found that one to be the hardest for me because you have to want to not be your old self anymore. The decision is also leaving the past behind. Everything that you know now is a wrap. The slate is clean. I'm making the decision to change. Okay, the third one is work. You got to put in the work. You already acknowledge that you are the problem. You already made a decision to change. And now you got to show up for yourself. You just got to. There's no other way that you're going to move forward if you don't put in the work. Like the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Okay. So if you don't put in the work, you're not going to get a result. All right. Number four is transition. You have to be willing to move from the comfortable spot that you're in to blossom into who you are supposed to be. Do you understand that? Let me run that by you again. You got, you caught that? Okay. Transition. You have to (laughs) forget who you were. And be comfortable 
moving into the space of who you truly are. Those are different people. You're not going to recognize that person. You have to know and get to know yourself all over again. That's transition. Another question. Hey, Tay Tay, how do you balance being a great mom and a boss in the entertainment industry? I'm just going to go ahead on and take out the entertainment industry out because I just think that balancing your career and motherhood is so hard. <laughs> and you always feel like when you're at one, you're supposed to be at the other. So if I'm at work, I, I, I'm always feeling like I need to be at home with my kid. And when I'm at home, I feel like I need to be doing more for my job. So the balance is so hard to grasp. But I do believe that um, because mothers are so instinctual, you know when it's time to focus on your home and put down work and pay attention to your home, meaning your kids and their school and what they need. And that happened to me. Um, I started to instinctually feel like my son missed me more at night, and he did. So I started to play this game that I actually learned through my therapist, and it's called Rose and Thorns. And that's just us checking in with each other about um, what we did, what our day. So a rose is something that excited us, like the good part about our day. So last night, my rose was that I got to, you know, show up for myself. I ate right. I worked out. Um, I did a good job, you know, on my Zoom calls. Um, I closed the deal. Um, I felt good about myself. And I asked Logan what his rose was. And his rose was, you know, that school ended early. So, but that's good for him. You know, that's what he looks forward to. And he was excited about that. And um, a thorn is um, what wasn't so good about your day. Right. And so. You have to kind of play that game. It's a really good game to play with your kids just to let them know that you care about what happens, you know, during the day. And so you don't miss things. So you can talk about those things. So when you talk about the kid's thorn or I talk about Logan's thorn, I always give him something encouraging. You know, a thorn for Logan yesterday was my Xbox controller battery went out because we ain't never got no batteries in our house. And so, like, I always try to give him a solution. You know what I'm saying? Like, that really sucks that, you know, your battery went out. You probably didn't get a chance to save your game. But mommy's going to get, you know, better about, you know, having things like that in the house because I know that it is important to you. So those kind of games are, like, really, really helpful to check in, you know, with you and your kids. And, you know, I need more suggestions because sometimes you just don't feel like playing Rose and Thorn. <laughs> so what do you guys do um, to check in with your kids? Um, so, yeah, hit me up. Let me know what y'all do. All right, so I hope I've answered your questions. And remember, guys, if you have something that's on your heart, something that's on your spirit, and you want my take on it because you know I am always going to keep it a thou thou. All right. <laughs> Email me at ucwithtamar at gmail.com. And you can write in for advice about your kids, your job, your man. What's going on with your edges? Oh, I got something good for that. And anything else you want to talk about, I'm going to try to help you out. All right. Well, coming up next, we'll get into the heart of the show. And it's called The Blueprint. And today's topic is very fitting. It's all about resilience. More after the break. This, this is the blueprint. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Welcome back to Under Construction. I'm your girl, Tamar Braxton, and we're getting ready to get into the blueprint. Yes, this is probably my favorite part of the show because the blueprint, we get a chance to like talk to guests and like find out what's going on with their lives and how they have managed certain situations and whatever their insight is about the topic of the day. So each week there will be a different blueprint. A blueprint to success, to love, to being fearless, to achieving your goals. And there are some essentials that we just 
can't ignore as we go on our journey. Guess what? You got to go through the process. So this week, I want to give you my blueprint for resilience. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I don't think we ever give ourselves enough credit. Like, think about how much stuff we actually take in on a daily. But yet, like, we got to keep it going and remain hopeful. Y'all, that takes a lot of strength. It really does. So, y'all give yourself a round of applause. Because sometimes you just got to clap for yourself. Now, I want to make sure everybody know what resilience means because I had to Google it and remind myself. So let me tell you what I came up with. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And it's a really important characteristic to have. But I think a lot of people might get stuck on how to actually be resilient. Now, I believe that everybody has it in them. And it's a muscle that you constantly have to stretch. And it's important to really make sure that you stretch those muscles because when you do not, child, you might find yourself in some really bad destructive behavior. And it ain't cute. Okay, so here's some of my greatest lessons around maintaining, rebuilding, and being resilient. Find your tribe. Listen, your tribe is the people that are around you that you can lean on and trust. Now, I ain't talking about just any old friend. Like a tribe means that they're going to keep your secrets in the vault. Okay. And they're not going to be all wild and ridiculous and crazy, you know, when you say something that they don't like, okay, they're going to understand you. They're going to have your back and they're going to be one thou thou with you, okay? And they're going to help you work through your obstacles and your issues and tell you about yourself. And you know that it comes from love. And these are the people that you call when you're in a crisis. These are the people that you call when you look at your man phone and he did something he ain't supposed to. I mean, this is the people that you trust, okay? And your tribe is essential to your healing, period. Number two, use the setback as a learning experience. So maybe like eight years ago, I used to sing background for my sister. And, you know, I mean, most people would think if you sing in background for, you know, an international superstar, that's a good job. I mean, it's a good paying job, too. You get to travel the world. I mean, on top of that, you get to hang out with your sisters. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and that was cool. But I wasn't fulfilled, right? And people used to talk about me because I used to complain about it all the time. I used to be like, oh, my God. Like, why am I singing? Do I pop pop for Tony Braxton? I am a superstar, okay? I'm like one of the top three singers in the world. All right, okay? And... People would look at me like I was crazy, but I truly one thou thou percent believed it. I still kind of do. But like, (laughs) you know, I decided to leave my job and that meant you ain't got no coins, Linda. You're going to have to trust and believe on your talent and be serious about your discipline and go forward. And what that made me do by not having anything to fall back on. Now, I don't recommend this. Now, I ain't gonna say, Tamar told me to leave my job and now I can't pay my rent. Uh-uh, that ain't not, that's not what I'm saying. I didn't say that. I said, Tamar, what, what I did, okay? So <laughs> I did do that. But what that made me do was bet on myself. And I had to rely on myself because I had no other option. So, It was a setback because my coins was at an all-time shortage. But betting on myself and that lesson that I learned behind that, I mean, it really did 
set me up for the person that I am today. Because not all the time are you going to have a group of people who believe in your dreams and in your goals. So if you bet on yourself and you put in the work, you know, hey, nine times out of 10, you're going to do it. So discipline is the most important, you know, setting yourself up for the win so that when you win, you are not hit with a ton of bricks and you don't know how to, you know, kind of relish in that win. So you set yourself up for that. Um, So you start the work as if you're winning in your grinding mode. When I want something bad enough, the discipline doesn't seem so hard. And if the discipline is too hard for you, you are never going to survive the win. And that's all I got to say about that. And you put that in your pipe and smoke that and let that marinate. Because okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, some the wind be sometimes the wind be so doggone great. You can't handle it because you're not prepared for it. Like just, people be like, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. L, I took that L. You know what I'm saying? I, I took an L. So it, put, it set me back. I, I'm depressed. I can't, you know, move and shake because my L have, you know, like shaking me so bad well the same thing happens with success <laughs> and nobody talks about that success will hit you just as hard even harder sometimes than the l listen let me tell you something when you winning <laughs> you working ain't no friends you ain't got no time for your friends okay you ain't got no time to enjoy your nice expensive things <laughs> you know you're working so it's the discipline know that these things are not like going to be accessible to you all the time it's just not it's in the discipline and i wish i could change it and, and make it something else no it's not i'm sorry i mean life as you know it changes forever and that's that on that so you might as well just start now no you can't make it hanging out with your girlfriends on taco tuesday not gonna happen nope you ain't gonna have time for joe schmo to blow (laughs) to come on through you know and set things straight hallelujah no you're not gonna have time for that you're not gonna you know have time for dating a bunch of people and and making other people happy. No, there's no time for that when you win. No. So you might as well start that discipline right now in the hustle. You know, I still do it. I bet on myself every single day. Okay. So number three, self-care. Now, self-care looks different to everybody. But for me, it means to rely on my pillars. Okay, and I can't forget about my pillars. I have to make sure my pillars are met every single day. Or Houston, there is a problem. And I had to really sit down and write out the pillars of my life that completes me. So with my therapist, all right, I've come up with four pillars And that's basically the things that I put into categories to make sure that I don't give so much of myself to everyone else and everything else. And I still am fulfilled, right? So the first one is God. Every single day on my to-do list, I have got to check in with God. I have to make sure that we are very clear about our understanding with each other. Now, my place, I know some people might have um, a prayer closet or a room. My prayer closet is my shower. You know, I know he can hear me. Maybe it's the echo. Not really sure why. But I know that he and I are for real, for real on a one on one. And my conversations have become so daily. I promise you would think he is sitting (laughs) in my shower with me. Like God is my homeboy. It's my boy. And I talk to him like I'm talking to my friends. Okay. So I have to make sure I do that. Um, The second one is my family. And I'm going to keep it real with y'all. My family right now consists of me and my son. And sometimes you have to isolate, you know, 
the other family members to make sure you check in for real, for real with your immediate. And I know that it's important for me to maintain the balance of being a single mother with my work life and me being at home with my seven-year-old son. So I got to make sure every day that I have quality time with him and he doesn't feel like he's missing out on me, you know, so much because every day I can't give so much, but it's about an hour a day that I have to make sure that I pour into him and we pour into each other. Okay. Uh, the third thing is my career. Now, I know that my career and my purpose and my life is hand in hand. So I have to make sure that every single day I am doing something that is fulfilling to my soul, you know, and making sure that it's not about a coin or not about an opportunity, but about my purpose. OK, something that makes me feel good at the end of the day I'm walking away with. Oh, I feel good about myself. This is what I do for a living. I'm helping and empowering and inspiring and I'm getting that back for my job. That's important to me. OK, and the last pillar is me. And I know that might sound selfish, but you got to write down what is important to you, your time. It could be getting your nails done. It could be getting your hair done. For me, it's working out. For me, I'm on my spin bike. I love to spin because I feel like I'm clearing my head of things. You know what I mean? I come up with ideas. Um, I talk myself out of... Um, texting my ex and call, cussing them out, you know, about something I thought about. I mean, it's just me, <laughs> you know, it's me checking in with me. That's the time, me time, where I get to talk to myself and be with me. So these are things that has helped me categorize my self-care to make sure that I have enough for me. And I want to make sure you guys do the same thing. So I want you to tell me what your pillars are. The last thing, y'all, I'm not going to stress to you how important this is, um, and it is to activate your purpose. Now, many of you may not know what your purpose is, but I think before you know, you kind of have an inkling, you know what I mean? It's something that you are drawn to, something that really speaks to you and makes sense to you, and you have to activate that. You have to move in that because you won't truly be successful. You won't truly be fulfilled unless you move in your purpose. And if you don't know, then you just ask God and he'll, he'll reveal it to you. He'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? Be steadfast about it. You know, I mean, I started, you know, meditating. You know, I started sound bowling because I really honestly wanted to know what my purpose was and make sure I walk in my purpose so I can have, you know, a fulfilled life. And it's nothing wrong with manifesting, guys. It's nothing wrong with, you know, calling the things that you want into your life. You know, Um it's the same thing as praying, y'all. <laughs> Just want y'all, y'all Bible beaters. I ain't no, it's not witchcraft, okay? Manifesting, calling things into your life, you know, so you can walk in your purpose. I cannot believe time has flown by so fast. I mean, because guys, we're coming to the end of our first show. But before we go, I want to share with you my takeaways and what's been revealed to me and what I'm hoping that will be helpful to you. It's kind of funny that in this short time, I feel like I've added another pillar <laughs> to my life. And that is recapping with myself <laughs> about what I've learned from the day and the situation, right? So what I've learned is in sharing my experiences and my path to healing and finding my power and knowing that I am enough. These days, I choose to be Tamar 2.0, the better version of 
the Tamar that I feel like everyone saw grow up. And at first, I used to feel the need to apologize for who I was and how I used to express myself because a lot of people didn't understand and I I, I thought that I could make them understand by feeling like um, I was ashamed or insecure about who I was at that time. I thought that would make them like me more if I was like, I know I'm loud. I know, you know, I'm opinionated. Oh, I know. Like that's apologizing and not owning. Yeah, I am loud. Yep. I am opinionated, you know? <laughs> Um, and I think now for me, I can't apologize for the growth that I have been gifted with because I feel like at some point you either have to grow or you're going to have to fold. And it was really easy for me to allow myself to still play that soundtrack of that girl who I truly didn't know anymore and start to be comfortable with who I truly am and not apologize for it and show people how to treat this new Tamar 2.0 and not accept the things that I accepted before. So... For me, what I've learned is accept me for who I am because she's not changing. She is who she is, you know, and every single day she's going to get better and better and better. So that box you got in that corner waiting to put me in, I am never, ever going to fit in it. And never, ever, ever, never, never, no, never will you see again (laughs) that Tamar that you thought you knew. Talking about everything has really put a lot into perspective. And this one line of this song from the great Aaliyah, rest in peace, sis, said, if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try it again. You can dust it off and try it again. Like who's going to stop you? Who is to tell you how many times it's going to take to try, to win, to be better, to be sure, to want more, to work for more? It's okay. Listen, when you fall and when you stumble, these are learning experiences. And as long as you look at them as learning experiences instead of failures, That is what it will be. And so what I've learned is to pour into yourself. Make sure that you are happy with the decisions that you are making every single day. Make sure you are pouring into yourself that is going to make you better. Get your pencils out. Get your pads out. Write down your pillars. Do that to-do list every single day that's going to make you get up and try again. And so for my final words, sis, bro, get up and try again because you are enough. And that's that. Well, everybody, that went by fast, huh? Y'all just have no idea how excited I am to open up to y'all every single week and give you the real, honest, transparent, and a vulnerable Tamar. You know what I'm saying? The one that's under construction. So until next time, you can find me on the gram. Be nice in my comments, please, at Tamar Braxton. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, wherever you are listening. And if you happen to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, go ahead and rate and review our show because y'all know I read the comments and my team read the comments. And guess what it does? It helps our show. So I'll see you next week. 
Under Construction is a production of Most Sauce, a Stitcher brand. It's produced by Angel Lavis. Our recording engineer and sound designer is Rashad Smith. Our executive producer is T-Square. Music provided by Radio, an audio everywhere company. More Sauce.